So one of the biggest reasons that you might have difficulty setting boundaries is because you don't know where you end and where somebody else begins. Hey guys, it's Francisca. Thanks for joining me for today's video. In this video, I'm gonna be covering boundaries why they're important, especially if you're an empath, codependent, or highly sensitive person, as well as some practical, esoteric, and spiritual ways that you can set boundaries in your life. So why are boundaries important, especially if you identify as a codependent, a highly sensitive person, or an empath? So I wanted to start off by saying what boundaries aren't. So boundaries are not about saying no. <laughs> they're not about keeping other people out and they're not about being selfish. When I wanted to start setting boundaries in my life, that's how I thought about boundaries. Boundaries were about saying no, they're about me being selfish, um, and they're about keeping other people out. And because I thought that, it was very, very difficult for me to implement the boundaries in my life and really stick to them. But a couple of people helped me reframe how I could look at boundaries in a way to serve me better. So one of those reframes was boundaries weren't about saying no, they're about saying yes. Yes to your wants and needs, Yes to your vibrational alignment. Yes to preserving your wholeness. And because of that reframe, I was able to look at my life and say, well, what is it that I want and need? Do I, you know, want to be happy? You know, how do I want to preserve my wholeness? And when I was able to look at boundaries in that way, it became a lot easier for me to say yes to me and yes to the things that I wanted to do. Yes to being of service versus servitude. Um, yes to doing these hobbies and creatively expressing myself. More painting time, more time to work on my business, more time to study yoga and study breath work and study meditation and you know learn how to play instruments and learn how to really express myself creatively. So boundaries also really help you strengthen your intuition as well as strengthen that empath in you and strengthen your compassion and your patience. So why might you have difficulties, especially if you're an empath, identifies codependent or recovering codependent or a highly sensitive person? So one of the biggest reasons that you might have difficulty setting boundaries is because you don't know where you end and where somebody else begins. So for example, as a codependent person, you don't know where you end and where somebody else begins because you may be understood from an earlier age that you were responsible for other people's feelings. <laughs> Maybe you were told a lot, you know, you're making me feel this way, or why are you doing that? What you're doing is making me feel this way. Um, so you are made responsible for other people's feelings. You are made responsible for your caretaker's feelings. You know, if they had a bad day, it was your fault. Um, if something went wrong in the home, you know, it was because the kids are doing X, Y, and Z. Um, you know, and so there may have been a lot of that, you know, you're responsible for how your caretakers are feeling or their emotions or the actions um, of your caretakers, your parents or whoever it was that was taking care of you as a child. And so that may have been ingrained at an early age if you're a codependent. If you're an empath, you may not know where you end and where somebody else begins because you are feeling one way when you're alone and then when you're around the energy of a room or the energy of uh, people in an interaction, whether that be like maybe a Zoom call, maybe you're on a Zoom call and right before the Zoom call you felt energized and you felt really great and then you get on this Zoom call with a bunch of other people and you're like, oh my gosh, I feel so drained. 
And so then you think that that's you because you don't know what your boundaries are. And so that's why it also may be difficult for you to set up those boundaries is because you don't know where you, you end and where somebody else begins or somebody else's feelings or energy um, begins. As a highly sensitive person, you may also have this issue because of all the outside stimulation and all the outside um, activity. And so let's say you're, you're driving to work. As a highly sensitive person, you're not just you know driving to work. You're taking in all the cars around you, the, pe the movement of the people around you, um, the construction on the freeway, the interaction between the construction workers. And so there's so much information that you're taking in that it can be difficult for you to distinguish the information that you're taking in and your own feelings. So again, you don't know where you end and where something else or someone else begins. Um, so that's why it might be difficult for you to set boundaries in your life because you don't know where <laughs> where your own boundaries are. Another reason that it may be difficult for codependents, highly sensitives, and empaths to set boundaries are because you don't know what your wants and needs are. You don't know what it is that you want or your need because a boundary is saying yes to your wants and needs. And so setting a boundary and trying to figure out what you want and need is kind of difficult. As a codependent person, again, you're made responsible for other people's feelings. And because you're made responsible for other people's feelings or because you feel like you are made responsible for other people's feelings, you feel also that it's your responsibility to fix everything else and fix everyone else. And so because you're so busy doing that, you never pay attention to what you want and need because you're always putting everybody else's wants and needs first. So as an empath, trying to figure out your wants and needs can be difficult too because what you want and need is for other people to feel good so that you don't feel drained and you don't take on their energy and you don't absorb their energy. So knowing what your own wants and needs can be difficult. And as a highly sensitive person, again, there's so much stimulation outside of you that you may just want to, you know, shut yourself off. And so you feel like that is your want and your need is to be away from everything and everyone. And so because that's your immediate want and need, you may not know what the other wants and needs in your life are. So one of the other reasons that you may um, have difficulty setting boundaries is fear of abandonment and fear of being lonely and even boredom. Um, and this mostly applies to codependent people because that is one of their biggest fears. <laughs> um, because they may have been abandoned as a child, they may have felt that they were abandoned as a child. They may have felt, you know, earlier on, you know, this 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 intense fear of being alone. Um, it might be really difficult for you to to set boundaries because setting boundaries um, can lead to you being alone. It can lead to you cutting yourself off from people who are needy and people who always need you, people who always have problems and are always coming to you to fix them because that's where you get your worth, fixing people and fixing things and fixing situations um, because you don't have a sense of self. So yeah, that's, that's really difficult and it can be triggering for some people to try to set those boundaries. But the reasons that it's so difficult for you to set boundaries as a codependent, highly sensitive person or empath are the reasons that it's so important for you to set those boundaries. Because remember, setting boundaries are more about saying yes than they are about saying no. Yes to your wants and needs. Yes to your vibrational alignment. Yes to your satisfaction. Yes to you not disappearing. Yes to you knowing who you are. Yes to you knowing where you end and where somebody else begins. So some practical ways that you can start setting boundaries are to observe what's going on. Observe how you're feeling. Take note of when something bothers you because if you don't know what your wants and needs are and you don't know what saying yes to yourself means, then you need to start observing what's going on, what your triggers are. And then that way you can start defining what your boundaries are because boundaries are different for everybody else. What I want to say yes to, like if I want to say yes to volunteering, might not be your idea of what a good boundary is. 
So for example, for me, when I started setting boundaries, I started observing that I didn't like when I was being interrupted when I was trying to study something. And it may have been like last minute favors that could have been asked for like weeks in advance. And so I didn't like that. So I started observing that and I started realizing, hey, this is kind of happening a lot. And I'm always saying yes to it because I feel like it's an emergency when it really wasn't an emergency. And I was being stopped from what I was doing from things that I like to do, like studying for yoga classes or studying for my aromatherapy class. And I didn't realize that before I would just jump up and say yes because it was an emergency or because I viewed it as an emergency, right? Um, what it really was was something that could have been asked for in advance. So then that way I knew that I had to go do this favor for somebody because I chose to do it and I knew that it was going to be at a certain time so then I'd change my study habits around them or I could have said, no, I can't do it that day, you're gonna have to ask somebody else. So start observing, that's really a practical way. Keep a journal of things that bother you um, and then you can go back and later on kind of figure out how that felt in your body. If you're doing it in the moment, you can also kind of take a breath and just stop and just see how that feels in your body and start becoming self-aware. Meditation is a really great way to become self-aware and to start noticing and observing your thoughts and your feelings because meditation really helps you take a break. It helps you reset um, and it helps you slow down that mental chatter and that way you can also connect to your intuition and connect to your inner knowing and know that when somebody is really triggering your boundaries that you have a way to respond because you know how that feels because then again you know where you end and where somebody else begins. So some esoteric ways that you can start protecting your boundaries um, are by using crystals and so crystals are a really great way to uh, protect your boundaries. Different crystals do different things. A lot of your black crystals will have that protective energy um, and will absorb the negative energy around you. So here I have a uh, black tourmaline. So this is a really great crystal to use, especially if you're going to be like around people who you know can drain your energy. If you're an empath, if you're a highly sensitive person, being around a lot of energy, this will also kind of absorb that. Another crystal that's really great is selenite. And selenite, I love this heart-shaped selenite that I picked up in Los Angeles um, in January when we could travel. Um, and it, it's really great for protection and cleansing. And so that's one way that you can also uh, protect your energy. Chakra balancing is another great way to get in touch with your boundaries and figure out what those are. So the root chakra is what helps us feel secure and it's our foundational chakra. And so if you have some excessiveness or deficiencies in your root chakra, you could feel a little bit insecure and you could have some issues with your boundaries. Also, your sacral chakra is responsible for processing your feelings and your creativity and your passion. And so if you're not in touch with what your wants and needs are, your sacral chakra may have some um, balancing that needs to happen there. The solar plexus chakra, that's our chakra for our willpower. And that helps us say yes to ourselves. And so you may also be having some alignment issues going on with your solar plexus chakra if you're having issues making boundaries or setting <laughs> setting boundaries. Um, your heart chakra is responsible for how you give and you receive love. So if you're having issues with boundaries, your heart chakra may need some balancing there too. And then your throat chakra is responsible for your expression, for you saying yes to yourself. And so if you're also having issues with boundaries, you can do a chakra balancing meditation and maybe focus a little bit longer on each of those uh, chakras. And I do have a chakra balancing meditation that I made a couple of weeks ago that I'll link to um, in the description box below. Another esoteric way to set boundaries is a white light meditation, one which I really love to do. So you could do, imagine, 
light. <laughs> so for the white light meditation, you can imagine white light just surrounding you and protecting your boundaries energetically. Another great technique that I like to use to set energetic boundaries is um, asking the energy to leave. And so, for example, um, there was an instance where somebody that I loved was having um, some emotional difficulties and I was feeling fine five minutes before I got a phone call and then I get this phone call and then I start feeling like really aggravated and really drained and just really all of the things that they were feeling um, in that phone call. So what I did was I asked for the energy to be dissolved into the light and I said, any energy that doesn't belong to me, I ask to be dissolved into the light. Any energy that doesn't belong to me, I ask to be dissolved into the light. And so it basically is asking the energy that's not yours to leave. And so it's really great for empaths. Another really great way for uh, boundary setting is to use tarot cards. So one of my favorite things to do is to use tarot cards and just pull a couple, um, maybe sometimes uh, pull about three cards and say, you know, like maybe a past, present, future um, for what I can expect for boundary setting. Um, so <laughs> these three cards I just pulled, the past was a devil, um, being blind to uh, my needs and putting the blinders on and, you know, indulging in things that really don't serve me. Um, the present is the three of wands moving forward, <laughs> moving forward, having made a choice and moving forward, looking for your ship to come in. And the future is the emperor, all about stability, all about, <laughs> all about structure. And so what are we talking about in this video? Um, so other ways that you can do, um, set boundaries or start getting a practice of setting boundaries is setting a personal practice of self care. So having a meditation ritual, having a breath work ritual, you can do small sessions of breath work during uh, the day, especially if you feel like your boundaries are being crossed, but start small, have some compassion with yourself, have some patience with yourself. But I'd love to hear from you guys. What are ways that you set boundaries in your life? Why has it been difficult for you to set boundaries if it has? And do you identify as a codependent, highly sensitive person or an empath? That's it for now. Till next time, bye.